okay father in the name of jesus we give you all the praise and all the glory thank you oh god for this miracle you have given unto us keep us keep us moving forward in the name of jesus we can do without you lord this morning let your name be praised and let your name be magnified we thank you oh god write thy word on the tablet of our hearts i humble myself that your word be spoken to god effectively through your spirit holy spirit before we leave this place give us direction direct our steps order our steps lift us higher in jesus mighty name we are prayed amen and amen hallelujah shall we take our bible we want to climb right now higher matthew chapter 25 reading from verse number 1 to through 13. matthew chapter 25 reading from verse number 1 through 13. hallelujah matthew chapter 21 sorry matthew chapter 25 sorry 25 verse number one hallelujah matthew 25 verse number one the bible says then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five were foolish they that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, some version will tell you why the bridegroom delayed. They all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. And the foolish said unto the wives, Give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be enough, not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. Somebody say mercy and atonement. <laughs> Verse number 10. The Bible says, while, And while they, were, they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready, somebody say ready, ready. went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Verse number 11. Afterward came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. 13. Watch therefore. Tell somebody watch therefore. Watch therefore for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh may the lord ask his blessing to his word the kingdom of god was likened like this the whole kingdom is like the whole sin portrayed by this parable some the bible says some bridesmaids are prepared for the groom and enjoy the banquet and others are excluded because of their own lack of preparation this morning i entitled my message keep awake and keep the fire burning does somebody keep awake and keep the fire burning in this story it is expected that the bridemaid will wait will await the arrival of the bridegroom and meet him with a procession of light in the darkness. It is expected of them to await the arrival of the bridegroom and also prepare themselves for the light of procession in the dark. But the Bible says, unfortunately, the ten virgins, out of the virgins, five of them were wise 
And five of them were what? Foolish. It is not my word. It's the word from the Bible. The bridegroom are waiting at either at the bride. So normally in our tradition, let's bring it down here in the modern system. When a wedding is conducted or in the process of a wedding, it is normally the bride that wastes time, not the groom. Because they want to put everything in order. All the touches on the forehead. All the, all the makeups. Everything must line up. So the bridegroom will be waiting at home for the bride to come. The music is going on in the church. Songs are going on. Yet, the bride is not there. Have you ever experienced that in any wedding before? Where they've been waiting for the bride and the bride is not coming. You say, ah, what is taking them so long? They are doing everything possible to make sure that everything is correct. Probably, they are making sure that before she comes in, everybody would have been sitting down, correct, no movement. But in this case, the Bible says it was not the bride it was the bridegroom and the bible did not explain why he delayed or he tarried are you hearing me the bible did not explain that the bible said he delayed he tarried until all the bridesmen now listen to me the fact that you are made a bridesmaid does not qualify you or guarantee you the access to become the owner of the wedding you didn't hear what i said you are only invited to be a bridesmaid once you become a bridesmaid you are not the owner of the ceremony so you cannot behave anyhow if they say the door is going to be locked it will be locked now listen to me something is coming up something is coming up the reason why they were not able to miss the master, number one, because of their lack of preparation. Lack of preparation. Your preparation will give way to your performance in life. If you are not prepared, you will miss the target. But then my prayer for you this morning, that God will prepare you until the return of the son of Jesus, that you will not miss the mark. When the trumpet shall sound, you shall be among them. Can I hear a louder amen? And hear a vibrant amen? Yes, you will not miss the mark. You will not miss the mark. And the Bible says, when you go to the verse number two of that scripture, or number three, the Bible says, and the virgins were, they fell asleep as they were waiting. They were waiting. And the Bible says, the wise virgins took extra oil. They knew what was going to happen. They took extra oil. Meaning that their heart and their mind for that occasion was so much prepared that they wouldn't miss the coming of the, of the bridegroom. What I'm going to tell you here is that an extra oil is what you need in life. The oil you have used in 2018 is no more in effect. You need an extra oil which is the anointing of God to move forward for the kingdom. It doesn't matter how long you have been in the kingdom. It doesn't matter how long you have been worshipping God. But this time you need a constant relationship with God. You need a constant fellowship with God. And your constant fellowship with God will bring you more extra oil. Tell somebody, I carry the oil of grace. I mean, you carry the oil of grace. May you carry the oil of grace. Your oil will not run dry in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that all the maids have their lamps and perhaps large flashlights. All are awaiting their lamps, light in eager expectation. You, must, you might have a light and the light might not be used. Or you might have a light that you are not using. It is now time for you to let your light shine forth in darkness that people can see the good work the Lord is using you to do. Tell somebody, I am light. Wherever I go, darkness must disappear. 
or you are not saying it like you mean it. Tell somebody, I am light. Wherever I go, darkness must disappear. Now, the Bible said the bridegroom delayed, which signified that Jesus at this time was trying to try the faith and the patience of the mates. I don't know how long you have been expecting miracle to happen in your life and it's not coming and you have given up on the Lord and you are telling God it is too much for me it is now time for me to pack myself and live in the house I don't want to go to a place of worship anymore I have prayed all the prayers and things are not happening Jesus will delay just to try your faith and see if you are patient enough may your patience deliver you does somebody be patient be patient be patient be patient be patient hallelujah and the Bible says that it says that the people were waiting they were they were eagerly waiting for the master and they fell asleep there are some of us in our walk with God we are falling asleep we are falling asleep you used to read Bible every morning you used to do your devotion every day you used to fast and pray every time but now you are falling asleep because of the weight that is coming upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord is not too short to deliver you. Neither the ears of God are too heavy to listen to your prayer. Whatever closeness you have with God, God will surely show up for you. Tell somebody, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. It is time to wake up. You need to keep your fire burning. If your fire is not burning, you will not be able to go through the darkness and be able to see well. Keep your fire burning. Don't allow any distraction to come your way because distractions are roadblocks in your blessing. They are roadblocks in your way. Distractions are way. They are form of trap to pull you back from the things of God. Tell somebody, I will not be distracted. Or tell somebody, I will not be distracted. Distraction may come in many ways. It may come in many ways. Now look at what happened. The people who took extra oil are now relaxed. And people who don't have the extra oil are now asking, listen to me, you have an extra oil. I'm giving you a revelation here. So listen to the revelation. You've been worshiping God for a long time and you have accumulated the grace of God and the favor of God for you in your life it is not enough for somebody to come to you and tell you you know what don't go to church anymore sit at home the devil is a liar you carry the grace to move on you have been moving on no matter how the storm is the storms will come they will hit you but God will not let you be ashamed in the midst of the storm so somebody else who doesn't have who doesn't have the salvation you have? Somebody else who's not serious for the things of God will come to you and tell you, brother, you know what? What you are doing in the kingdom of God is too much. Can you give me some? Well, now, what they do is that they know that you are supposed to be in prayer meeting. They will organize a barbecue party for you. And they will ask you to come to a barbecue party. And when you get to the barbecue party, you tell them, you know what? I'm supposed to be in church. You say, it doesn't matter. Only one day will not miss anything. Don't waste your oil. So somebody don't waste your oil don't waste your oil they will organize the party because they know they don't have an extra oil to run the race of Christ in the faith of God so because you are moving forward they will do everything possible to, to delay you you will not be delayed you're not responding I said you will not be delayed delay is not your portion and disappointment is not your portion and when they came and they consulted the five virgins, the Bible says the virgin told them, no, it's not enough. There is nothing wrong when you tell people no. Your white must be white and your black must be black. And the truth must be told. And if they are angry, let them, let God hand it them. Because the wise virgin did not want to miss the, the, the coming of the, 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 the groom. Are you hearing me? Many times in your life, because of what people do, you say, you know what, if I say this now, they will be offended. Listen to me. If it's for the kingdom of God, for the sake of the kingdom of God, you must stand tall on your feet. You must raise your head up and let your yes be yes and your no be no. That day when Jesus appears, it is one-on-one -on -one affairs. Somebody say one-on-one. -on -one. Husband and wife can be sleeping. 
listen to me, and can be highly in Jerusalem way, when the trumpet sound, that husband or wife can disappear. And now you now come to yourself and ask yourself, what is happening? The kingdom work and the kingdom walk is personal affair. Don't allow anybody to withdraw you or to make you stop serving God. Tell somebody service. Tell somebody service. God will never deny the work of your labor. I talk about Jerusalem, people are looking at me. I see they don't know what I'm talking about. If you don't know, see me after church. I will only take a yogurt. Pastor also drinks all yogurt. Amen. Don't allow anybody. It is good to say, to say but the wise answer them and say, not so. Let there be not enough for us and you. It is not wrong when you know that what is happening or what is coming to you will stop you from worshiping God. It is not wrong when you say no. I'm not talking to somebody. The man, of, the man of God said this morning, he said, he went out to see the homeless, to feed the homeless. Somebody else will tell you, you have a lot of money. Why don't you save your money in the bank so that you can build in Africa? We are building in the kingdom of God where there are no truths in heaven. At the day and at the final day, your work shall be tried in heaven. The Bible says, he that win a soul is wise and receiving the crown of God. That is what the gospel is about. Number one, what will make you to keep awake and to keep the fire bending is the word of God. Write it down, the word of God. Tell somebody say, well, the word of God. The word of God will keep you awake. When the word of God is inside of you, when sickness comes, you tell the sickness, I am the Lord that he left thee with the stripe of Jesus. I am here. Ah! It is the word of God that will keep you alive. Tell somebody, keep alive. Say, so stay awake. Tell somebody, stay awake. Shake the person. Give the person a high five. And tell the person, stay awake. Stop sleeping. The word of God is sharper than what? The double-edged sword. The word of God. When the word of God comes in, I know there are some people here, they're, they're thinking, 2020 is coming. I don't even have a land in, in Africa. I don't have, I've not even built any house. Let me tell you, when you bid for the kingdom of God, the God you serve will make a way for you. When you stand for the things of God, God will bring to pass for you the things you don't even deserve. The Bible says in Philippians 4, it says, my God shall supply. My God will do what? Shall supply all your needs according to what my god shall supply all your need not some of the need all your need when you take care of the things of god god will supply the people at the banquet the ten veggies they were invited to be part to have light to show in darkness for the bridegroom only five of them that were prepared let me give you a revelation here five is the number of grace sometime in life it is not about the crowd you didn't hear me sometime in life it's not about the crowd jesus did not need the ten of them to have his wedding because he's capable of going through that wedding without the without the minus five in life you might be thinking oh we are not many if we are not many we can't do it oh because we cannot we are not many it's not possible for us we God all things are your individual effort is needed put your seal into it be determined and have faith in everything you do God will surprise you ah you didn't hear me I am here to declare upon somebody it's been a long time you've had so many dreams and the dreams are not coming to pass but i am here to tell you today your dreams shall answer to you in the mighty name of jesus tell somebody keep awake and keep the fire burning don't allow anybody to quench your fire now listen to me write this down it's very important write this down spiritual emptiness is a risk in christian journey spiritual emptiness is a risk in christian journey 
the people's oil was empty so they could not partake that particular wedding the bible said when they came back looking for that opportunity to enter the door was shut listen to me when you are spiritually filled there is nothing that you cannot call for or call upon that will never come to you when you are spiritually filled and you are not empty i'm telling you you know how to descend and you know how to divide the word of the law with truth when you are spiritually dry when somebody come and talk something to you you will be tossed and you'll be pushed down i pray for you that you will not be spiritually empty i say your, your vessel will not be empty i say your lantern will not be empty let me show you a scripture over here the bible says something in the book of matthew matthew 12 20, 43 let me show you something over here oh jesus jesus help me matthew 12 43 the bible says something over here let me show you how the devil operates when you are empty let me show you matthew chapter 12 43 12 43 read it for us if you are there all right the bible says when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through the dry places seeking rest and finding none then he said i will return into my house from when i came out and when he is come he findeth it empty he found the place what empty swept and what garnished go ahead then goeth he and taking himself what other seven spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse more than the first one when you are spiritually empty part of negativity comes in your mind and when they are coming back they come back in bunches and they come to torment you than the way you used to be before i pray for you that your mind will not be empty oh you didn't hear me i pray for you today that the thought of the heavens will occupy you spiritual uh, spiritual tests shall be your portion how many of you are testing for god you test for him you are you test for the lord you are hungry for him that's why i tell somebody there's nothing you can do to stop me from worshiping god i'm telling you if you don't know me i'm telling you today you cannot do anything to stop me from worshiping god i know where i came from i know how god delivered me i know how god brought me very far away so you cannot stop me from worshiping god you can say anything you want to say jesus christ we worship has gone through a lot therefore if my master has gone through a lot how much more you you will not be empty your business will not be empty your home will not be empty your children will not be empty your life will not be empty may you carry an extra oil there are some things you do now people don't understand how you are doing them you have an extra oil put your right hand on your head and say father i receive the oil of grace the oil of overflow the oil of abundance in the name of jesus may it rest upon you you will begin to operate in a miraculous way i'm telling you there are some divine helpers god is going to dispatch in your way i'm prophesying to somebody i said there are some divine helpers that god is bringing your way you don't need to do anything for them they will help you so what do you need to do to keep your light your lantern or your light on give the, the devil no place somebody give the devil no place if you allow the devil he comes in Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 27 Ephesians 4 27 the Bible said give the devil no place if you are empty he comes in but if your mind is occupied with the things of God go to verse number 26 the 27 the Bible says something over here 26 27 Ephesians 4 26 7 the Bible says over here Give it to me. Be ye angry. And what? Now read, read the rest for me. One to go. 
Let's read together again. One to go. Be ye angry and sin not. Let me show you one revelation here. How do we spell anger? Now, remove the word from the devil, the D from the devil. Put it in front of the anger. What is that? No, no, no. You're not hearing me. How do we spell anger? A N G E R. The devil. Remove the D from the devil. Put it in front of the anger. What is that? You move from anger to danger. When you are angry and he begins to manipulate you, the Bible says, Be ye angry. It's not a problem when you are angry. But the Bible says, What? Sin not. By so doing, let not the sun go down on your wrath or your anger. When you are empty and you allow the devil, you give the devil the place to come in your life. He puts you to danger. You tell yourself, if I wish, I wish I had not done this. I wish I was not angry. I wish I did not spoken. I have not spoken. I wish I have not said anything at all. Listen to me, people of God. The devil is roaming around 24-7 looking for whom he may devour. But you will keep awake. Keep what? Keep what? Tell somebody be alert. They come in the form of devices. In manipulations. Your thoughts. Number two. For you to be able to keep awake and keep your, your fire burning, you need to sacrifice. Tell somebody sacrifice. Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. He did what? He gave. Now, it might not be money, but your time, your treasure, your talent is very important. When you have your talent in the house of the Lord and you serve him every day, it sharpens your gifts. It makes you sharper than anything. Are you hearing me? When you are a prayer warrior or you become a worker in the church, the working you are doing for God will make you more sharper than who you are. You know why? Because the Bible says, iron sharpened word, iron. You need to sacrifice. Now listen to me. Let me tell you this. Sacrifice with your treasure. Sacrifice with your talent. Sacrifice with your what? Your time. Pressure, it could be money. I tell something to somebody, some people here on Wednesday. Let's, let me tell you, when you come to the house of God and when you come to giving, it's a personal affair. Are you hearing me? When they come to giving to God, sacrificing to God, it's a personal affair. You don't allow anybody to force you to give. The giving should come from your heart. And when you give it, it must be given for the purpose of the lost kingdom. That's why I hear some of you saying that, oh, and the prophets uh, 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 forced me to give. Ah, did they tie your hand? Did they tie your hand? Now, I want to make this correction. The money the prophet took, he didn't put it in his pocket. He put it in the church. So if you are angry because that money is coming to church, then you are an enemy of God. Listen to me. Those who cannot give, they find problem with the people who can give. And it, that shouldn't be your problem. If you are sacrificing to God, I told my father something. I said, listen to me. He said, he asked me a question. He said, anytime I go to church and they are doing fundraising, he said, I don't have the money to do. Should I go and stand there? I said, yes. If you are going to stand there, make sure you pay it. Don't give it and go. Now, don't allow anybody on this earth who is a man of God and a woman of God to force you to give what you don't have. I'm speaking. I'm speaking the word of God. Don't. If the person forces you to come forward, sir, God bless you. I don't have, but when the Lord blesses me, I will give. Yeah. 
Are you hearing me? When you give, it goes into your own account. Not in the person who collected it, but the one who gave it out. It goes into your own account for the work of God. When people come around you, they want to support you. They rather become a supplanter, but not a supporter. Who is a supplanter? Give me English. English. Huh? Uh-huh. Say it again. Uh-huh. Somebody who comes in scheming tactics. You say, ah, I am here to support you. I will support you. I will be there until the rain falls. And when the rain is dry. But when the rain is beating you now, they run. All they do, instead of them becoming a supporter, they become a supplanter. Be a supporter to the kingdom. Don't be a supplanter to his kingdom. Supplanter is somebody who is devising means and ways. It's there. But your heart is not there. You are only there to destroy. That's why the Lord will bless you. If you don't say amen, I will force it on you. The kind of church we want to build in Nation's Life Chapel. I want to see you when you are signing check. When you are signing your check, you will frown your face. Listen to me. There are some ways when you sign check. There are some ways when you sign check. Give me pen. I have been worried. There are some way when you sign check. You are signing the check. Eh? And then you see all your <laughs> It's not coming from your heart. Oh. And when you are about to release the check, this is how you release it. But my prayer for you is that the Lord will make all things possible for you. That when you are signing the check, you'll be smiling. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Two million dollars. That is your portion. Hey! You see people supporting other stuff. When the Lord blesses you, some of us, or some of the people, the first place they think about is Las Vegas. They say, I want to go and double it. I was there 2013. I was there myself. And I was where I was with one of the hotels. I was there myself. We went for a, a program over a meeting over there. And I saw this guy, a black guy with no shirt. And he has won the money. And there was security around him. And he was walking like this with all the money. And in my head, I was praying. I said, If I were you, I would not try it again. If I were you, I wouldn't try it again. No. Because that spirit over there will not allow you even to go through the gate and go out. They will make sure all is finished. But the Bible says, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and have no sorrow to eat. When the Lord blesses you, there will not be any sorrow. So when you are giving in the house of the Lord, don't allow anybody to force you. I heard the man of God, 98% in the room over there, he said, how much do you want to give? Now, if you have the opportunity to give and you know you can give more than that, go for it. Because when the blessing comes, it's not coming to the pastor. It is coming to you. People of God, be careful, be alert. Who you are listening to when you are sacrificing to God. Why? They don't want you to be at that level when you can be free to worship God. They want to keep you down. It's the deceit of the enemy. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Number three. The only way you can also be able to keep yourself awake and keep the fire burning is prayer. Someone say prayer. Someone say prayer. When you pray, the Bible says in Luke chapter 18 or Luke chapter 11, verse number 1. Luke 11, verse number 1. Read for me. Hmm. Oh, Jesus. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, 
one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, do what? Teach us to pray. Even the disciples with the Lord Jesus were asking him, teach us to pray. Prayer is not evil. Prayer is the medium by which you communicate with God. James chapter 4, verse number 2. A lot of you are asking some things that God is not giving it to you. Go ahead, let's read. James 4, 2, 3. James 4, 2, 3. Read it for me. Hmm. James 4. Now, can we read? The Bible says, which version is that? Okay, give me the one from America. The Bible says, you desire, you do not receive or have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not want. Today you are living this place. There are some things that you are desiring. You go back to God. You do not have because you don't, you do not what? Ask God. You desire, but you do not have it. So you kill. Now let me explain that killing. It might not be a killing with the knife. Ah, your sister came to church and put on a nice shoe, 15 inches shoe or talking shoe and you saw it and for you to praise the sister, you remove your eyes. Look at how she's walking. Look at how she's walking. Ah, if I were you, as a sister, God bless you. Ah, I love your Louis Vuitton. This is very powerful. Michael Kors. I love it. Ah, I'm so excited for Hey, he has done it before. The more you celebrate people when they have, the more God gives you. Am I talking to somebody? When people... See, one of the ways to tap into some people's blessing is to celebrate them and honor God for them and God will give you. Ah, the brother came to church with a nice suit. That the way I walk today, brother, 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 brother Brian was admiring my shoe. I asked my head, I said, if only you know. Hallelujah. He said, hey, pastor, this one is a new one. I said, yes, of course. Celebrate God with me. Hallelujah. If not that, he would have seen me from far away and look at my shoes and a lot, A lot of us do this. A lot of us do this. The Bible says you desire, but you do not have. So you kill. You covet. What's the meaning of covet? Covet, covet. To covet something is what? Uh -huh. You covet. What doesn't belong to you? But you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. The house of God must be a place of peace. A place of unity. A place of love. A place of covering. Ah! You see me in a mess. You run behind me and say, Brother, you know something? I want to talk to you. 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 You know what happened? This is what I see. Not in disgracing the person in public. You call yourself a Christian like, like Christ. You cover. I was talking to somebody from France yesterday, from France, on ministry work. And I tell the person, I said, you know, the reason why the kingdom of God is being divided, there's no unity in the kingdom. Everybody wants self, self, self. Me, 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 me. I want to be known. I want to be known. Me, me. It's not about you. It's about God. It's about Jesus, not about anybody. The King of Kings and the Lord of Law. And John the Baptist in the Bible was older than Jesus. But he said, I yet am I decrease so that the, 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 the name of the Lord shall be what? Increase. You covet, you fight, you quarrel. In the kingdom of God at this time, if you are still fighting your neighbor and fighting your sister, you need to grow. I pray for you today that your fire will keep burning. In your dreams, you wake up 
and see some things in your dream when you wake up you begin to fire up in the spirit and return it to sender say it's not coming back to me it's not coming enough of fear and frightening and threatening people are giving you in the realm of the spirit you will not quit tell you i will not quit i tell yourself i will not quit so you need the word of god you need sacrifice you need prayer keep your fire burning it looks as if things are very difficult for you let me tell you something i told myself something yesterday i was in one of the biggest church yesterday down madison you can go find it out trinity life trinity life center i was there in the church yesterday for some ministrations and i came out of the parking lot and i was taking possession of the landmark <laughs> oh jesus you don't get it one of the guys came out and said sir are you okay i mean i was in the spirit speaking in tongues when i did not mind them before i opened my eyes there was a police car him he came up and the guy rolled down the glass he said sir are you okay he said oh you are praying no problem no problem you are praying he took off when you are in the spirit and you are doing for god do not allow any distraction distractions are roadblocks to your faith i'm talking to somebody don't be distracted don't allow anybody to step in your way if they don't want to be a helper in your entrance let them come to back and they will become backbiters and you will become a front biter you are going forward and you are backward anybody who is not supposed to be at your entrance may the lord remove them yeah. ah, your amens are suspect yeah. i said anyone standing at the gate of the lord preparing a trap for you to fall may they fall in their own trap you will preach the gospel i said you will preach the gospel i said you will preach the gospel you don't necessarily have to carry your bible to go and open the bible to preach your lifestyle is the gospel i said your what your lifestyle is the gospel the way you walk the way you talk the things you do in the kingdom of god pleases the lord the bible says if the man's ways pleases the lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him your lifestyle i want to tell you something here if you hear something outside that you are concerned call me come and find out from me i will tell you the truth i'll do what i will tell you the truth there's nothing for me to hide if i hide it from you when i'm going to hell you won't be there so there is no need for me to hide i'm not going to somebody my prayer for you today is that let your fire be burning and the bible says that when the disciples when the virgins returned from where they went to buy the oil by the time they came the shout had already gone and the master came in and the door was shut may you never experience any closed door in your life in the name of jesus may you never experience any closed door in your life in the mighty name of jesus doors will be open unto you you need to be ready god is trying your faith god is trying your patience how patient are you i want to ask a question is the church ready for the coming of the lord are we actually ready are we making our mind prepared for the coming of the lord so all we mind and bother is this little little thing as of the kingdom if somebody comes to me to gossip i say brother sister let's go to home depot parking lot and we sow for the kingdom of god we need to depopulate the kingdom of hell and populate the kingdom of god and stop all this distraction don't allow anybody pray your prayer ah i see smiles on your face anytime you see my call coming to you please let me tell you something don't deny my call i will never call you and ask money no when the lord puts you in my spirit and ask me to pray for you i will call you when you see my call don't deny it immediately you miss my call return the call 
there are people out there who are prophet lying. They are not prophesying. They are prophet. Uh -huh. So you live in the presence of the Lord. My prayer for you is that this year, in the month of November, celebration galore. The grand style of that procession that was coming to those ten villages, five of them, they missed the grand style of the procession. Because their oil was out. You will never run dry. Your pocket will not run dry. Nation's life chapel will not run dry. Your spirit will not run dry. Your job will not run dry. And if I see anybody devising means and ways to bring you back to where you came from, they themselves will be answered. That's what my prayer for you this afternoon is that I see glorious children of God that the Lord is lifting. I don't know what you want to do for the Lord. Maybe your fire has gone out a long time. I'm speaking to you now. Maybe your fire, your fire has gone out long ago. You don't know what to do. And I am decreeing a fire legacy upon you right now. May you be filled. Spirit of the living God fall a flesh on me. Spirit of the living God Spirit of the living God Fall afresh on me Spirit of the living God Spirit of the living God Fall afresh on me Fall afresh on me Spirit of the living God, Spirit, Spirit of the living God, oh, fall afresh on me. Break me, Lord, break me, mold me, use me, fill me, and use me. And you me, speak. Sing it out. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand wherever you are. Oh, fresh on me. Oh, break me. Mold me. Feel me. Fill me and use me and use me, Spirit of the Living God. In the name of Jesus, I declare the power of God. Spirit of the Living God, Spirit. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. Just worship, we just worship the Lord. Worship the Lord, worship the Lord. Fall afresh on me, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, Spirit. Sing unto the Lord. Let it fall upon you tonight, this afternoon. Fall afresh on me. Break me, Lord. Break me. Mold me. Mold me. Fill me. Fill me. And use me. And use me. Speak. Sing unto Him. Let's be silent before the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The presence of God. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. That extra oil 
you feel so heavy in your spirit. You feel so down and disappointed. You feel confused and divided. But the spirit of the Lord is feeling you right now. That your fire will rekindle. Your fire will come back. I decree and I declare whatever it is that is holding you bound as a voice of God and as a child of God and as a man called by God I command that hand to be taken off you now Amen. in the name of Jesus whatever make you stagnant that you are stuck in one place that you cannot move today is your day the fire of the Holy Ghost Come upon you now in each corner, in everywhere. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. There is somebody here who is feeling pain in your leg. Your leg, your right leg. You have a pain, serious pain. You can't burn it. I command the Spirit of God. The fire of God now in the name of Jesus. Oh, let the Spirit of God touch you now. Let the anointing of God touch you now in the mighty name of Jesus somebody is having problem with the eye you've been scratching your eye for about two three days two three days seriously you'll be scratching and sometimes you are driving you cannot even watch with your glasses i command the hand of god to touch you right now in the mighty name of jesus somebody is having pain in your head at the back of your head it's like when you lay down every night you put your head down you feel the pain inside of you. The Bible says, I am the Lord that he left thee. Sing it out. Oh, I am the Lord your healer. You sent your word. You sent your word. Oh, and heal my disease. I am the Lord. I am the Lord, the Lord your healer. We sing it, I am the Lord, I am the Lord. Lift up the song and sing it now. Oh, that he left thee. Oh, I am the Lord, Lord your healer. You sent your word. You sent your word. And heal my disease. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Your God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me close. Hold me close to His side. With love and strength. With love and strength. For each new day. He will make a way. Now, if you are here and you have a court case in this week or on this week or this particular week or next week come and hold my hand this week or next week if you are here you are going to court or you are seeing a lawyer or you are seeing an immigration person please come and hold my hand if you are here or if you know somebody who is due for a cause case or the, 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 the case in the court and the person is not here I want us to intercede for that person and stand in the gap for that person I see God doing something great and changing the story on behalf of that person Father I declare and I decree hold my hand I declare in the name of Jesus I declare in the name of Jesus the right hand of God. The right hand of God. The right hand of God. 
the right hand of God will uplift you in the name of Jesus. I declare the right hand of God. May God intercede and intervene on your behalf. Go in peace. Karabo Shandabaya. I declare, I declare, on behalf of your wife Mabel, I decree and I declare that case is settled. That case is settled. That case is settled. They meant it for evil, but God has turned it around. She's coming back with victory in the name of Jesus. You are coming back with a song in your mouth. She's won the case. It is settled in Jesus' mighty name. I decree that the mighty hand of God will follow you. It will follow you. It will follow you. Whatever the case is, you have won. You have won. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare. May the Lord uphold your right hand. May the Lord uphold your right hand. In the mighty name of Jesus, that you are coming back with victory. It is settled. No matter what they do, it is settled. In Jesus' name, I command the blood of Jesus for you. He will be my I command in the name of Jesus. Your friend is coming out with a testimony. They can't hold her down. Enough is enough. I cancel every allegation that she's not involved in. Turn around for her favor. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. I decree for you that the case is settled. It is settled. It is settled. It is settled. It is settled. No more. Today is the last day. In Jesus' mighty name, I decree and declare for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. God will lift up your legs and your steps and order your steps to be out of any judgment that is not for you. I decree in the name of Jesus that it is settled. You are free and set free in Jesus' mighty name. But it was to remain. Sing with me, oh God. He will do something new today. God will make a way. Ah uh -huh. 